the Joe Rogan experience. We heard at the World Economic Forum, right? We heard the... Brian Stelter was there. (laughs) Brian Stelter. Brian Stelter is now at the World Economic Forum. What can we do about these problems? He looked very comfortable there, didn't he? Of course he? he does. He's with evil lizard people that are trying to control the world. That's his bosses. He knows how to handle that kind of situation. I've been around these evil, evil lizard people. <laughs> he looked he looked as happy as, as maybe he's ever been. Well, he's probably very excited just to be working again in any f- way, shape, or form. That's true. You know, I mean, he's not a guy that really is supposed to be in front of a camera, right? He's supposed to be a journalist, but he's not even good at that. So he's what he's doing now is holding water for the evil leaders of the world who want to institute hate speech policies nationwide and, you know, centralized digital currency, and they want everybody to eat bugs, and you will own nothing and be happy. This is the fucking people he's working for now because he's basically a prostitute and you know they they hired him to go over there and do that and he's like what what can we do what can we do better Uh, what can we do different to get everybody to stand in line yeah what can we do and 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 for a journalist to sit there 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 was that one moment where that woman Vera Yorova she's an EU official and she's talking about hate speech laws and then she 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 touches the knee of somebody sitting next to her and saying you're going to have that in america soon yeah uh and brian stelter is sitting there grinning yeah you know like that's not offensive to him like a a european basically saying oh yeah you're going to have this too soon like even though it's completely antithetical to everything that we believe in in this country like well i think when you're working in a corporate news structure and you could speak to this better than i could obviously but i think when you're working in an environment where you have editors and people in your ear and you have producers and you have narratives that the company is pushing and then you have sponsorships that you're beholden to it's very difficult to form any sort of problematic or controversial independent thought and then try to express it publicly you're not going to do it it's just too scary and sketchy so when you're trying to keep that job and here's a guy like brian stelter who already lost one of the biggest gigs in all of broadcast news he was on fucking cnn and then you know here he's standing there and they're saying you you're gonna have hate speech laws in america too he's like okay everything's running smooth everyone's smiling like he 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 doesn't he's not suitable for that role right he doesn't belong there you don't have the stones to carry that conversation in a way that's going to benefit all these people that are listening to it what you want is someone who's in that position that goes hold on what do you think is hate speech what's hate speech to you and what's hate speech to me and who gets to decide yeah how, how is that going to yeah. be adjudicated like right. what's what's your definition of what's your different def, definition of hate what's your right. definition of speech like, exactly you know what i mean like there are a lot Does of context questions. matter yeah right. yeah and how do you decide and obviously when you're looking at things over text context gets very blurry You don't know if someone's joking around like there's so many pages that I get sent that are satire I've got a hilarious one. There's a new one Rick Rubin sent me this this one He's like this got to be satire, right? And it's brilliant brilliant satire But there's this person who has like the best version of a super liberal uh, Like my children will never eat food from a gas stove like like that, that kind of shit and there's so many of these like it's hard to tell who's who's what and what's real and it's it's just one of those things where you're you're it's 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 hard when you're looking things through text because people are sneaky they're really good at it and people are so ridiculous in real life that a really subtle parody is very hard to discern so is that hate speech if someone's doing it as a parody is that hate speech like right. when do you decide that something is hateful and that's exactly why traditionally in this country w- w- judges have always said well they haven't always said it but they they eventually came around to the idea that we can't involve ourselves in these questions they're t- they're, they're too difficult and it's not our job um, we're going to step in in only the most extreme cases right so the the current standard is you know the supreme court case brandon brandenburg v ohio which outlaws imminent uh, uh, incitement to imminent lawless action, right? So you have to be basically saying, you know, let's go get them. Go, go get them. Let's, Break into know, the White House. Shoot, shoot that person. Like yeah. that's illegal speech, right? Anything short of that, we're gonna stay out of it because it's just too. It's too confusing. It's too right. complicated, right? Like if you start getting into what's satire, what isn't, what's incitement, what isn't, like as we see at 
companies like Twitter, you know, you can spend endless amounts of time building sandcastles trying to figure out what is what, and yeah. and and it will always end in in a place where the government you you know. Uh, interprets it to its greatest advantage, yeah, and and that's why we you know we don't want it, <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it, it ultimately it's not a good thing for uh, for most people, but it's just very hard for people to realize, even though this thing that you're talking about wielding this weapon will work against your enemies, it can ultimately also be used against you. That was the thing with the Patriot Act. When the, you know, indefinite detention, when they were, they were talking about just being able to detain people, and Obama was like, don't worry, well, I would never do that. But you're not going to be in the president forever. Like, someone else is going to come along. And perfect example, that next person was Trump. Right. Well, what if someone's crazier than him? Like, what if something happens? What if there's a some sort of a, a nuke goes off somewhere and then everybody gets way more radicalized and then you can get a really fucking insane, like a Stephen King character. What was that movie where the, the, the one evil guy becomes president and... Oh, God, the Greg, Greg uh, Stilson. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Dead Zone. Dead Zone, thank right, you. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not far removed from that right. in terms of plausible plots that this wacky country can fall into. And that's the same thing with censorship. Like, they can use it against you. So, like, if you're, you think you're using this to push back against right-wing extremism, they can use that to push back against progressive ideas that would generally benefit, genuinely benefit good people. Right. Genuinely benefit families, genuinely benefit people in need, genuinely benefit people in terms of health care and education. They can stop that. Absolutely. They can stop that if it's unprofitable with the same sort of tools. Absolutely. you got to have free speech. It's the most important thing we have, and it's the one thing that separates us from everybody else. So when you have liberals and progressives that are screaming against removing people from platforms and stopping this and stopping that, understand what the fuck you're saying yeah and they and they don't they right don't. yeah i mean like it's just convenience it'll work we, against my enemies 